Today I'm rebuilding Miami and NCAA football and not stopping until we win a national championship because they just lost in the dumbest way possible. All they had to do here was take a knee, but instead they ran it and ended up fumbling the ball to Georgia Tech, who would then go down the field in like 20 seconds and score the game-winning touchdown. After that, I have no choice but to fix the Hurricanes, and our first move is firing Mario Cristobal immediately. He will be replaced by none other than myself, and I actually know how to call a QB Neil. Anyways, the main goal is to win a championship, and we're picking up right where Miami left off at four and one. As for recruiting, I've scouted a lot of players and these are the best few that I was able to find, but unfortunately we're trailing by a lot on Devin Matthews and that stinks because this guy's a freak athlete. When I look through the rest of the roster, there's a lot of positions I think we'll be okay at and this team's in a pretty good position considering there's only 10 seniors we're gonna lose, but it's still important that we're able to land some of these prospects like Quay Jones because one of our two season objectives is sign an 85 plus recruit. Just in case I miss somebody, I am gonna go through and scout even more guys, but unfortunately 83 overall was the highest we could find. We're probably best off scheduling everybody to visit against North Carolina, but before that game could happen, Devin Matthews had already committed to Michigan. At least there's still some other five stars visiting, and I'm surprised fans are still showing out after our last loss. In this rebuild, we're gonna have Tyler Van Dyke for at least the next two seasons, which should make things easier. Henry Parrish is also very quick, and I'm gonna abuse that. Look at him already getting things done. And if we're gonna stay in playoff contention this season, we can't lose another game, but it seems like everybody's pretty rattled. I mean, you'd expect the locker room to be pretty upset after the loss to Jordan. Georgia Tech, but surprisingly, the defense has been able to channel all that frustration and take it out on North Carolina, who hasn't been able to score yet. I definitely wasn't expecting this type of result against North Carolina, but Henry Parrish went off, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for this program. With just that one result, we were able to sign so many different players, and that includes 87 overall kicker Austin Beverins, so we've already knocked off one of our two season objectives, and we're back in the top 25, so I don't think nine wins is going to be hard to come by. The big name five star I still can't get to commit, though, is Quay Jones, and we're just just gonna have to hope that the 87 overall comes to his senses. Our next matchup is at Death Valley though, and let's just say that Clemson's a bit better on the game than they are in real life. We're already on an early third and 12, and I don't see anything getting open in time. And on our next drive, we have no choice but to get into the end zone because Clemson has already scored again. It is 14 to zero, and I just can't do a thing. We're gonna attempt the 50 yard field goal and hope for the best, which looks like it's down the middle, but our defense just can't stop Will Shipley. We're gonna hit him in the backfield, and of course he's able to break free and go down inside the two. So we just need some something to go our way. I'm going to throw up a 50-50 ball to Xavier Restrepo, who's able to moss the cornerback, and that's the best way we could have ended the first half. Clemson has been milking a ton of clock in the third quarter, though we are going to miss the tackle on Klubnik, and it'll be easier to make the playoffs next year when there's 12 teams involved, but this year, I think all of our hopes are pretty much done. Here on 4th and 13, with the game on the line, Tyler Van Dyke has plenty of time, but nobody was able to get open, and it stinks that we weren't able to pull that one off. At this point, we have pretty much no chance of making the ACC championship, and I think we're going to struggle to win nine games. We now have to face off against Florida State on the road, and they've been playing amazing, but I'm hoping with the weather being this way, some fluky stuff can go our way, and we are not going to pick it off there, but we have held the Seminoles to just a field goal. However, that was the only time we do that as approaching halftime. The Seminoles have 24, and we need to score, because if we don't, we're definitely going to be out of it. I'm going to try to roll around with Tyler Van Dyke and just dive on in. I'm not thrilled with how the first half went, but the game is still far from over, and we just need somebody to get open against this man coverage. They're clamping us up. Xavier Restrepo comes away with it, though, and I think he's only a junior, which is huge because he's going to be a monster next season. Holding them on fourth and three would be massive for us, but there's nobody out there in the flat and they're going to get the first plus a lot more. And I think it's going to lead to another touchdown. I really just hope this team can be competitive in the coming years. And I'm going to try to put this throw in a tightrope with Tyler Van Dyke, which he does. And as a senior quarterback next season, he should be even better than he's already been this year, which is great that he's recovered from injury. I'm not sure I can blame George for dropping this ball because that was a tight window right there. And we should be able to get into the end zone anyway on the following play. To keep the game alive, we have got to get a stop on third and three. I'm using the slant with Williams. Jordan Travis throws it right to Davis, and I'm surprised they don't have the punt team out there. They went for it, and they're not going to get it. An upset here could really set the tone for the future of this rebuild. Tyler Van Dyke is going to get pressured by three guys, though, and that's not what you want to see. We don't have man coverage out here. We might have a one-on-one -on -one ball with our tight end. He is much bigger than the safety. He comes down with it, and Elijah Araro is a beast. I can guarantee that if we're able to get into the end zone, we are going to go for two to end this game, and I've taken down a lot of the time, so Florida State would have no chance of responding. Xavier Restrepo is going to not make the catch, though. And honestly, that was just too tight of a window to try to fit it in. Florida State fans get to celebrate beating us now, and I can promise you that's not happening again in this rebuild. I have come here to fix Miami and turn around the U, so we're going to shock the world against Louisville, and that's mainly because they're much better in real life than they are on NCAA football, which should make it easy to win. On our first drive, we are already going to score on the Cardinals, assuming we make the catch, and getting a result here is super important because remember, we need nine 
nine wins this season if we're going to be on pace to win it all. I think by like year four, we might be good enough. And what a terrible fourth down play from the Cardinals. From there, we should be able to go ahead and seal our win as Colby Young is going to get into the end zone. And that means we're already bowl eligible. Tyler Van Dyke also played really well. And there's only three matchups remaining on our schedule. We should be able to beat Boston College, especially since this one's at Hard Rock Stadium. But as time winds down in the third quarter, it looks like they're about to take a seven point lead. And I can't believe that we haven't just dominated this game. If we're going to get to nine wins this season, we can't afford to lose it. Henry Parrish Jr. can't make the catch. And right after that, they would score again almost immediately. So I can pretty much assume that this one's over, but we can try to go for the comeback. There is still three minutes left, so not all hope is lost. And I'm going to go for the two point conversion just as an ego play to be aggressive. It'll be completely on our defense to get us the ball back and they're already breaking tackles, but I trust that they'll get it done. We're going to go with the run commit and they still get four yards. So this is a massive third and one. We get in the gap and we pull them down. We might have embarrassed ourselves against Georgia Tech, so I can't also let that happen against Boston College. Out of the Wildcat, Henry Parrish Jr. is going to be able to break free. He gets a perfect block and I don't think he's going to have the speed to beat this last cornerback chasing him down, but we have already worked it inside the red zone and they're going to go with man-to-man -man coverage, but our tight end is a little bit quicker. Because I went for two on the last possession, we're going to have a one-point lead and I am sending a bit of a blitz here. I don't think it's going to get in in time though. Here on second and four, I am going to be all over the tight end who is smothered, but they still get the first down and they're getting really close to our field goal range. So I sent seven, but they were expecting the blitz and I think he's going to break free. You know what? We're just going to let him get in so we can score. If I didn't do that, they would have just run down the clock and kicked a field goal for the win. On the two point conversion, we are not going to get the stop, but they have come out pressing us, which is not a good decision. Jacoby George on the outside is going to toast the cornerback and he is so quick that they're not going to come close to catching him. We're most likely going to go to overtime, but since we're the better team, that's exactly what I wanted. They're going to get the Hail Mary throw off and it's just going to be knocked away. And I'd love to stop him in this first period, but we're not gonna. To be honest, that's okay with me because we're just going to go for the two-point conversion if we get in. That is a dot to Xavier Restrepo, but apparently he wasn't able to get a foot in bounds. It's not going to be the end of the world because we're going to pick up the first down on the next play with Young, but this team isn't as good as everybody thought it would be. On the two-point conversion, the plan is to just roll out with Tyler Van Dyke and they don't have a quarterback spy. That is game. So thankfully, we improved to seven and three. And look, there's actually some fans in the stands. They showed up for the rivalry win and we've squeezed our way back into the top 25, but Quay Jones still hasn't committed here over Oregon, but this game against Virginia could change his mind. They're one in 10 and absolutely awful. And we've learned from our mistakes taking quarterback Niels. This is the last remaining matchup on our schedule. And I have no idea how NC State is ranked 17th in the country. We're approaching the end of the third quarter and their offense hasn't crossed midfield. So just an embarrassing day for them all around as we're going to win 24 to zero. And that means we've completed both of our season objectives. As of now, we're on pace to win a championship in a few years, but the ACC is going to add Stanford, Cal, and SMU next year. And some of our best players might declare for the draft early. To be completely honest, Tyler Van Dyke didn't have the best junior year, but he also didn't have a consistent number one target as he spread it around to almost everybody. Obviously, he was not in the Heisman race and we've made the Mayo Bowl against the Spartans. Next season, I'm hoping we make the playoffs when it expands to 12 teams. But for now, this is the best that we're going to get. And the result doesn't matter too much, but I'm still competitive. So I'd like to win. We're going to hold them to three with a minute and a half left. So that gives us a chance as they're just going to kick their field goal. And Tyler Van Dyke is going to need to be surgical if we're going to win this game. There's about 45 seconds left now. We're at the 40. But with one remaining timeout, the pressure is on and I'm throwing up a 50-50 ball to Isaiah Horton. He's going to catch it over the safety and go down at the one. So it was 100% the right move to take advantage of that mismatch. And because we did, we're going to win the Mayo Bowl. I hope Tyler Van Dyke returns for his senior year. And thankfully he is, but we're going to lose players like Cam Kitchens. The 98 overall safety is done with the Hurricanes. But besides him and a couple of seniors, we really didn't lose that much talent. I'm hoping during offseason recruiting, we're able to add Quay Jones to our team. And like I always say, it's good news when you see yellow names. With the addition of the five-star rusher, we have the number two recruiting class in the country. But for Fang's recruiting mod, this is honestly a terrible group of prospects. It would definitely help if training results could bless us. And I think we got our wish as I'm seeing that Tower Van Dyke is up to a 91 overall. Now it's time to realign the ACC. And because you can only have 16 teams in a conference, Virginia has been relegated to the American. The South Division looks like it's going to be a lot harder than the North. And I just have to hope that with this schedule, we're able to make the playoffs because that is one of our two season two objectives. The other one is we have to sign an 88 plus recruit. So I'm going to go search for one. And the number one player in the class is interested in coming here who becomes a 93. We honestly don't have a great chance of landing him, but we do have a good chance of getting Jordan Anthony. He's an 87, but he becomes a 73. So I'm going to search until we find somebody that's going to be an 88 plus. It might take a while or it'll be pretty quick. That guy's an 87. That's not enough for us to go after though. And after going through almost 75 prospects, all I found was James Head, Anthony Haynes, and Stetson Wagman. After
after we play the Citadel, we'll know our chances of getting them. And I just have to hope I can land at least one because I'd like to stay on pace to win a championship with Miami. And we're just going to go out and cook this FCS school against anybody else. This is probably an interception. And we ended up winning by 31, but it's going to be very hard to land one of these 88 plus recruits. At least on the bright side, we're starting the season inside the top 15, but the Gators are on the schedule next. And this one's being played at the swamp. This is going to test how good we actually are. And early on, we've already been gashing them with runs to Henry Parrish Jr. Now our defense isn't going to be as great as last year's was, but I think we're going to be able to hold them to three on their first drive. He goes out of bounds. And instead of taking the field goal, Florida's already going for it. And we should stop ETN, except he breaks free instead. And he's going to take it to the crib. Trevor ETN just ruined our hopes of getting an early stop. And the swamp is going crazy right now. Tyler Van Dyke got the right block that he needed though. And he didn't even set his feet before dropping this dime to Young. So if both offenses can keep this up, we might have a shootout on our hands. And on second and goal, I thought they'd go with the run, but they actually went with the pass, which worked. Nobody has had an unsuccessful drive yet. And on this comeback route, Restrepo just got put in a box. That's going to be the first stop. As I was just saying, no one had been yet. And that's probably going to lead to the Gators taking a lead on us, which it does. By midway through the third quarter, we are still down by seven and we need to respond back. We're going to go underneath and it's caught. And the ball just crossed the line to consider this a touchdown. We have a huge opportunity to get the Gators off the field. And ever since Tyler Van Dyke threw that interception, we have taken full control of this game. The only issue is Henry Parrish is out with back spasms. So we're going to have to use Chris Johnson Jr. instead. And they thought he was going to get the ball. The Gators have moved it down the field though, and they're going to respond back with a touchdown. So ideally, I'm hoping this is the last possession of the game, but there's no way that they just pressed Ray Ray Joseph. He just toasted the linebacker that was on him and he's taken that to the house. We've also gotten Florida to a fourth and 12 and it could all be over right here. We just got to get the sack. Graham Mertz breaks it though. And please just intercept this ball. Okay. There's no way that they caught that. They do not deserve to be alive in this game right now. We need to break up this halfback screen and we do, but it's not over yet. It's fourth and three and they're going to go with another dump off this time to another halfback. And we just need to make a tackle here. Come on somebody. There we go. It took everything we got, but we're going to survive Florida at the swamp. And this is a massive rivalry win. I know they weren't ranked, but it felt like it. And that win alone has moved us up to number eight in the country. Our next one is against my city's team USF. And they actually play this in real life next year. So I'll probably go to it. Anyways, since they're a 77 overall team, I don't think they're going to give us many issues. And with three minutes left in the fourth quarter, a touchdown on this drive will seal it, which we're going to get. All around, it was just a great performance from Tyler Van Dyke. But unfortunately, Stetson Wagman chose a top two and we didn't make the cut. Since I'm only going after high overall players, we're going to be in a ton of close battles all year. But we have a great visit week as we play number nine FSU in week seven. Also, we ended up getting locked out from Anthony Haynes, but I can open the door on him and that'll jump us up all the way to number two. But unfortunately, we can't plan a trip for him to come to Miami. Our upcoming schedule is honestly brutal as we play three top 16 teams and it all starts on the road at Louisville. They're two and one, but I know this one won't be easy. So we're going to have to do our best to keep up with the Cardinals because they've already scored seven. By halftime, they still have a lead on us. And even though we were able to score, I just know their offense is going to respond back. I'm going to do my best to get a goal line hold, but I ended up guessing run there. And on third and one, I'm going to go with the deep post played Isaiah Horton. He ended up cooking the safety. It's floated perfectly to him and that is going to tie it at 28. This is not the time for us to drop a game. It's still early in the year. We're ranked in the top five. And of course he was open and is able to get to the 10. I want to say we're a playoff team, but we're in a close matchup with Louisville and we've rallied down the field again, but we're going to need to finish it off. So it's scary that we lost two yards there. Now it is fourth and three and I'm going to have to go to Xavier Restrepo. He's the guy I want to go to in the clutch and that'll get us down inside the five. The senior stepped up when we needed him to and Tyler Van Dyke dives in. The only issue is the Cardinals still have a chance to get in field goal range though. We've surrounded their quarterback. He somehow slipped out of it and that's just incredible from him. But I don't understand how he was able to do that. We're going to lose. To give us a chance, I called a timeout in case they don't pick up this third down, but of course they do. And I can't believe Louisville of all teams is going to beat us. Our only real hope is to just chuck it up and pray for a miracle, but that one's going to be underthrown by Tyler Van Dyke. So we're going to lose, even though he had one of his best games ever with five total touchdowns. That's going to drop us down to number 12, but we have a great chance to redeem ourselves against Boston College. We've gone up 14 to 7 early, and now we have them on a third and 10 where their player runs out of bounds. So we'd hold them to a field goal, and with 57 seconds left in the half, I'm hoping that we can score again. Defense has been almost non-existent so far, and that was almost a sack. I'm going to run right into one instead. And I feel like I should be panicking because Ja'Curry Brown is in the game. He's just chucking up a bomb to Isaiah Horton, and he comes down with it for the touchdown. I was not expecting the sophomore to come out onto the field and do this in his first play of the season straight to one of our best receivers. And we're going to have to rely on him for the rest of the game because Tyler Van Dyke is out with a concussion. After this year, Brown's the future of this team, so I'm excited to see him play. And our defense is finally starting to step it up big time as we are going to get yet another stop. Jacob 
Curry Brown makes our rushing attack even more lethal because he's a bit quicker and he also has some juke moves, so it's no surprise that we came away with the win. And when Henry Parrish Jr. is healthy, he's a monster. There's no real favorite to win our division in the ACC right now, but after this visit week, I'm sure there will be. We're taking on Florida State, and this top 10 matchup is gonna be good. I think you could easily argue that this is our biggest game of the year, and they are already trying to bomb us early on, which is gonna work to Williams. After seeing how it opened up, one might assume that this would turn into a shootout, but approaching halftime, it is 7-6, to six, we have a lead, and they've already missed an extra point. We also have the ball, so if we're lucky enough, we could score a touchdown to go into the half to get an 8-point lead, and that's what we're gonna get to Young. If you watch that corner closely, he bit down on the play action, and since we have a lead, my goal in the second half is to control the clock as best as possible. I just want to limit possessions, and here on third and 12, we could get another stop to get the ball back, which has just led to pure domination. There's only a couple minutes left now, and if Florida State does not convert on fourth and 11, it's all over. They went with back-to-back -back halfback draws, and this result proves we're the best team in Florida. Unfortunately, we couldn't get James Head or Anthony Haynes to commit, but we did land Brandon Fernandez and Andrew Johnson. Both of those guys are huge pickups, but they're not an 88-plus recruit, and I'm afraid we might come out and lose to Cal. For whatever reason, they're actually good on this game as a top 10 team and they're getting sacks. So early on, I think I'm able to tell that their defense is why they're in this position, but we should be able to pick up this third and 16. And I swear that this team could actually compete for a championship. We're certainly not going to be one of the favorites, but this offense is good enough to keep us in any game. And that is a dot from Tyler Van Dyke. Our defense is definitely our weak spot though, as we're coming close to giving up another touchdown. We cannot tackle Jade Knott. And with about two minutes left in the third quarter, we're actually trailing by two. I'm going to try to fit this into a tight window and they're able to intercept it. That is unfortunate because I think Cal is about to go up by nine points on us, which is a two possession lead. We're going to need a miracle for that not to happen, but we don't get it. And I was so happy about our offense early on, but the Cal defense has actually decided to shut us down later into the game. Young is not holding onto the ball and we had the size mismatch here. So I went up to it, but he just couldn't finish the play. That makes this a massive third and 13 and they sent in blitzers. So we had no choice, but to punt the ball back to the Golden Bears and time is starting to run down. We've got the ball back with three minutes left, but we're going to have to do something quick and Restrepo is going to make the catch for us. And honestly, we've moved it pretty quickly down the field as we are going to score a touchdown. We have all three of our timeouts, so we should be able to get it back, but we're going to have to stop the run three times and Williams does it. This is a massive third and 13, but they went with the run again. And I can't believe how much they trust their defense. We have two minutes to just get a field goal and that's not going to be very difficult to do. So I'm not sure why they played so passively, but we should be able to beat Cal. Xavier Restrepo is streaking down the field and all he has to do is make a spin move to get in field goal range. On second and 10, we have winded some clock down just because I wanted to make sure they don't get the ball back. We're going to take the first down. And I think we're in a position where we could just take our field goal, but I'm not sure how good our freshman kicker really is. So Tyler Van Dyke's going to have to run for another first. We have put this team in the perfect position and now we're going to pitch it on the goal line. Pick it up. What just happened there? We scored. I do not want to talk about how I almost choked because we got the touchdown and on the two point conversion, we'll get it as well. Our fans absolutely love it. And assuming we don't give up this Hail Mary, we are going to take down Cal, one of our new ACC conference opponents, and that is going to end in an interception. This team has what it takes to finish game strong, and that result ties us for first place in the ACC South. Now we get to travel to the Pacific Coast, and get this, it's for an Atlantic Coast Conference matchup. Just fantastic all around for the players as we had to cross the country to get here. And with the way we've beaten them, it feels like a massive waste of time for us. Stanford just isn't good at football anymore. And with that performance, Tyler Van Dyke has entered the Heisman race. As of now, Clemson is the last ranked matchup on our schedule, but by the end of the first quarter, we're already down 14, and I knew that things were going so well that something would eventually have to go wrong, but I wasn't expecting this. Our defense has been practically non-existent, which is why we're down by 14. I'm just going to throw it up to Colby Young, and he catches it. I'm going to miss this guy so much when he graduates, but with four minutes left, we have not been able to score since then, and I just need to get something open. It's fourth and four. We're going to run with Tyler Van Dyke. He doesn't fumble, and that's massive because I probably should have slid. We've just worked it down the field on them, and this right end's keeping up, so more time is going to tick off the clock, but we just need to find a way to get into the end zone. And on third and goal, I'm looking for the slant. We have the separation, but it's a bad throw. That is not what you want to see. We have to stay in it. Our halfback is open. He holds onto it, but he runs out of the end zone. And Henry Parrish Jr. just gave me a mini heart attack. At some point, we're going to have to go for the two-point conversion, so we might as well do it now. And I'm just going to try to scramble a Tyler Van Dyke. Please be quick enough. But the real question is, are we going to be able to stop the run? And Dominique Thomas has almost 200 yards, so I had to sell out for it. On third and five, they went with the pass, though, and we couldn't stop him. I don't think it's over yet, but if we hold him, there will only be like 20 seconds left. And Clemson's running attack has just been so hard to stop, they get the first. I can't believe we've lost our second game, but for some reason, that was enough to convince James Head to commit, so we've completed one of our two season two objectives. The other one is make the playoffs, and right now we're in at number six, but now
now we have to play the team that caused this rebuild in the first place. And when we run up the score on them, I'm not going to feel bad about it. Let's just say they never stood much of a chance in this game. And this year, we are going to successfully take a QB kneel. That result gets us to 8-2. and two. And right now, we're in a four-way tie for first place in our division. The rest of our schedule is pretty easy, so I think we'll win out. And I don't see Virginia Tech giving us many issues. However, at this point, I should know conference games late in the season are always a trap, and that is going to be picked for a touchdown. I play so much, so much NCAA football, and I have never seen that happen while playing this game, but of course it happens when we need to clutch up and there's another turnover to add on to the misery. This team hasn't felt this rattled since we lost to Georgia Tech, but if we don't get it together quick, we're going to go down, and on third and eight, the best thing I can do is check it down to Henry Parrish Jr., but he was not able to get the first down, so on fourth and one, we're going to have to roll out and we just got to get the throw out in time, but of course, they were able to lock us up. This is going to go down as an utter embarrassment. They're up three possessions, but at least Miami fans are already used to getting left disappointed. This is just a painful one to think about, and I thought we might still be in the playoff picture, but they shot us down all the way to 21. I've never seen the poll drop a team that far off of one loss, but I've also never experienced one that bad that late in the season, and our final regular season games against SMU. Let's just say we actually came prepared for this one, and we didn't underestimate them, which is why we're going to win, but if we don't get a big bump up in the rankings, I think our season is pretty much going to be over. Ja'Curry Brown just juked out a ton of players, though, and I'm going to be excited to use him next year, but I wanted to make the playoffs this season. Going in the conference championship week, we also signed wide receiver Jake Prince, and it looks like we have moved up the polls a little bit, but obviously we weren't able to make the conference championship, and Tyler Van Dyke was nowhere to be seen in the Heisman finalists. But the moment of truth, did we sneak into the top 12? I'm just going to scroll down and hope for the best. I see Florida State, I see Texas, and I see Miami. Kansas and Colorado deserve it over us, but we have 0.1 more points than them, and that means we are still on pace to win a championship in a few seasons. We could technically do it this year, but Tyler Van Dyke has to improve, and I'm surprised that he rushed for over 500 yards. As for receiving, four of our top five guys are all seniors, and I just can't believe that we were actually able to make this a reality. The last time we played Cal, it came down to the wire, but before we start our playoff run, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks. Like always, I've been very successful in fading the Iowa offense, but after watching how Miami lost this past week, I have to do an entry with them where I think Tyler Van Dyke is going to go for more passing yards, while North Carolina running back Omarion Hampton goes for more rushing yards, because through his last five matchups, he's averaging over 92 yards a game, and you're welcome to fade my entry or copy my picks. Anyways, if you're not on prize picks already, Code Board will double your initial deposit up to $100, and you can play in over 30 states, so there's a good chance yours is eligible. If you're going to sign up, you might as well support me by using Code Board, but now it's time to see if we can win our first playoff matchup, and it seems like they're going to get on the board on their first drive if we can't stop Jaden Ott. He's a problem as he's one of the best running backs in the country, and our team is good, but I know Cal's defense is also really solid, so we're going to have to work hard to score. On second and 13, it looks like they're going to run man-to-man -man coverage, so I'm going straight to Xavier Restrepo, and we are inside Cal's 10, and at this point, it should be easy to finish it off, but we throw an interception instead, and the stadium shaking. With Cal taking it down the field and going up 14-0, it feels like this place is going to erupt, and we have no choice but to respond back. And the last time we ran this play in this position, we threw an interception, but we're going to a different route. It's definitely concerning we've struggled to stop the Golden Bears, but now we've gotten them to a third and eight. Come on, boys. We just got to lock up. I'm using everything over the middle, and the pass is short. But of course, the ref is going to call us for pass interference. I didn't even see any on that play, so it's ridiculous. But it's obvious that there's a little bit of home cooking going on, and we just have to respond back by getting at least a field goal. We might even be able to get a touchdown, judging by how fast we've moved down the field. Skinner is going to break free on the streak, and Jalel Skinner, our backup tight end, just got it within seven. That would be massive if Cal wasn't marching down the field on us already again. We need to stop Jackson the fifth, though. And on second and goal, they're going with the play action. We were not prepared for it. I'm going to rush in with Williams, and how did he make that throw? Like, legitimately, what is this? He rolls out to the left as a right-handed quarterback, and then he steps back and makes a fadeaway pass. And somehow in the process of doing this, he got it over both of our defenders' heads. We are in a lot of trouble, and we're not supposed to win this matchup because we're a five seed, but I believe we can. And it's just going to take our defense stepping up at some point. But going into the fourth, we're down by six, and we just need to stop the run. Jade Knott is going to break down to the three, but he wasn't able to get in, so we have a chance here. And I shot that gap perfectly, but I missed the tackle on the star, and we're back down two possessions. They're also going for the two-point conversion, and they're going to get it. So it seems like that one mistake in the red zone early on might end up costing us unless we can get in here. And now we have an opportunity to force another stop, but Jade Knott's going to break to the outside, so our chances of holding them are starting to go down, and this run is insane. I'm literally stacking the box and run committing middle, and we're not able to stop it. Why did our player just get glitched out? Someone just bring him down. He has broken like five tackles. Since they're already in field goal range, I guess the best thing we could do is try to let them get in and just score twice, but this strategy also requires 
requires us recovering an onside kick, and we're going to go for the deep post to Restrepo, which he holds on to. But our offense has not been the issue. It's been our defense, and even if we do get into the end zone, I think there's just too little time. That was a neat little one-handed catch from Jacoby George, but our season's pretty much over, and it's time to hope for a miracle. The ball is on the ground. Cal recovers it. We are going to lose in the playoffs, and this one stings a bunch. Our defense looked terrible out there, and it wouldn't be a realistic Miami rebuild without a complete collapse. To make matters worse, Florida State made the national championship, and we beat them this season, so this could be us. I can't believe I'm about to watch them win it all, but they were able to take care of business when we couldn't, and Georgia just got a pick six. Hang on, Florida State was about to kick a field goal for the win, but instead they turned it over, and I thought they were about to take that back to the crib, but they couldn't. This game's most likely going to overtime, and I hope the Seminoles lose so bad. On their first drive, they've gotten held to a third and 13, where they are not going to pick it up, so they've been forced to settle for a field goal early on, and for my own sanity, I need Carson Beck to put it away. On third and nine, he has a lot of time, and he finds his receiver, so it seems like Georgia's about to win the national championship again, and that's still better than it being Florida State. On the players leaving tab, it's painful to see, but we have about nine players going on to the NFL, and we had four first rounders, so we should have accomplished so much more. We didn't even get Anthony Haynes as he committed to Alabama, so I'm not very happy with how recruiting has turned out, and you might see the number 27 class and think it's terrible, but there's far more usable talent in this class compared to last year's. Athlete Kyler Hall actually becomes an 84 overall middle linebacker, and it's time for the best part of the offseason. It's time to go into training results and I'm seeing a plus eight, a plus six, a plus eight, and a plus 10. Those are some of the biggest boosts we've ever gotten, but Ja'Curry Brown didn't improve at all. It's a good thing 96 speed Chris Johnson Jr. is up to a 93 overall, and I think it's time we start letting players develop and put our skill points into coaching. So now we're going to end up having so many different advantages, and even though our schedule seems to be more difficult than what we had to play last year, this season we're shooting for winning a playoff game and having an award winner. I think it's definitely possible since we're projected to be the 14th best team, and we're also the highest overall team in the ACC, with an incredible 97 offense and defense. Our conference is the third toughest, so I'm hoping we can win it, but first we have to play our non-conference games, and this year USF is coming to our place. Through the first two quarters, they've kept it pretty close, but I think we're going to take a lead before the half, and Chris Johnson Jr. is so quick that there's no way they're stopping him on the halfback toss. What's fun about this team is how much speed we have, so we can run the option really effectively, and we are going to pitch this one to Horton, and I think he is going to have the burn to beat every other player on the field and dive into the end zone. I'm telling you all, if our defense can get it together, we are going to be very solid. We need a big hit here and we are going to get him down. And it was closer for longer than I would have liked, but we're going to put it away here. Riley Williams makes the catch in a grown man's play. I'm very happy with how we looked there, but then again, it is USF. So how the Florida game goes will be much more telling. Again, it's at home and in the rain, but I'm still going to try to throw it early on. I think Ray Ray Joseph is going to be faster than the cornerback on him. And he is. The junior is going to give defense is a lot of problems, and we're just going to run the option a lot today. Chris Johnson Jr. jukes that player out, and he gets down at the two. I think our offense is really good, and we might as well just run around with Ja'Curry Brown for the touchdown. So we're on the board super early, and I'm telling you all, defense will be super important as we already forced a three and out. I don't think anybody on the skater team is going to be able to keep up with Ray Ray Joseph on the drag, so I'm able to go to him on third and six. And Florida's also experiencing injuries, so everything seems like it's going our way so far, and our tight end was faster, but Ja'Curry Brown missed the throw. I'm telling you all, this team is literally full of speed demons. Even our quarterback is able to run it without pitching the ball. So it's going to be extremely fun to play with all of these guys. And Florida's already down 14 to zero. We had to improve defensively. And I think we made the strides forward that we needed because approaching halftime, we are up 21 to zero. And I'm trying to get back with our user, but their quarterback stumbles over and they're only going to score three points. I know it's early, but I feel like this team is better than the one we had last year. And Ray Ray Joseph just burnt that corner on him. He's going to take this to the crib to go up 28 to three. I don't think anybody expected us to beat the Gators by this much at home, but they just haven't been able to stop our offense, and Chris Johnson Jr. somehow maneuvered through that. It took a few years of developing and building them all up, but this team is so much fun to play with as we're going to score again, and you have to wonder if Florida's really the number four team. If they are, we could probably win a championship with this group of guys, but they could also be overrated based on how last year went for them. It's kind of crazy that we're already back to being ranked in the top five, but we have some very difficult matchups on the schedule, so I'm not sure if it's going to last. We did get lucky with all these games being at home, and I almost wish we played Ja'Curry Brown when he was younger because he could have developed even more. I'm going to try to take off with him here, and he's going to lose the football. For that situation, it was not the right decision to make. Now Gibran Payne is running on our defense. We need to stop him from breaking free, and again, whether or not we have success will all come down to how good our defense plays. We're going to hold them right here, and you have to wonder if their kicker is really good enough to hit from 53 because he missed to the right. It's been very low scoring so far, but we've been running a lot of the 
option and we're finally getting some first downs. So I'm hoping we can finish this drive off with a touchdown and Jakari Brown just didn't go down. I don't know how he did it, but I'm not going to ask any questions. Kenny Minchie is feeling the pressure and we have an opportunity to go down the field on Notre Dame to go up by two possessions, but there's the interception from our junior quarterback. Let's just say we're very fortunate that our defense has played this well because they even had a pick six and with just a few minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, we are up 28 to zero on the Irish. So the best thing we can do instead of running the ball is take a knee and I'd say we're fully prepared for ACC conference play. Our first opponent is Wake Forest who hasn't won a game and they do have the home field advantage. So I probably should have learned from the Virginia Tech game last year, but what is this play call? We're able to just run it. We fumble it. Please just pick it up. And I have no clue what happened there. It was supposed to be a read option just like that. But the important thing to note is we're trailing 0-7 to to Wake Forest and that's an inaccurate throw. All I'm going to say is this pass was meant for Ray Ray Joseph, but it went to another guy. And Jakari Brown is a bit rattled on the road, but this is his first road game as well. And we're just going to have to kick a field goal most likely unless he gets out of this. I don't even know if our kicker has the leg for it, but it looks like it's long enough. And the beauty of college football is any team can beat you, but it's also one of the most frustrating parts. We've now gone down 17 to three on the Demon Deacons, and there's just not much hope left for us if we don't score quick. I think we're going to, but we've been running too much of the option, and it's worked a lot better in previous games once we already had a lead. On this play, I'm going to need the defense that held Notre Dame to zero points, and that's what we get. So we have some hope, but we need to pick up this third and seven, and I went to Ray Ray Joseph, who is going to truck a guy and get the first. I'm telling you all, that little midget has to be one of my favorite receivers, and there's one safety over on two guys, so we're going to hit it to Isaiah Horton, and he's just going to juke inside and dive into the end zone. Wake Forest is crumbling right in front of our eyes, and they're not going to pick up the third down. So we're starting to look like we have full control of this game, and again, what are these plays? They show up as an option type of run, but I'm assuming it's messed up because of revamped. Our one's wide open. I can't get it out, though, and I cannot believe we are on a third and 32. I guess we might as well just send up a prayer, but we're going to have to punt it back to them, and an arm punt works as well. I'm a little afraid Wake Forest has worked it into field goal range, but I'm hoping we get a stop here, and why was Alexander wide open? The Demon Deacons would go on to score a touchdown, so I'm going to throw it up to our number one guy, Ray Ray Joseph, who is just so much quicker than everybody else, and surely teams will learn to not press him eventually. This is a huge third and 10 to keep our chances alive and keep the undefeated season alive, but Wake Forest just didn't have a good play there, and James Head, the freshman, is going to get us to about midfield. We've been able to work it down on the Demon Deacons pretty well, and I knew that was cover two from the start. We should be able to escape with a win, but it never should have been this close, and I guess we've learned that we don't play well on the road. If I'm remembering right, last year Boston College was really good, and this season they've started 3-0, so I'm expecting the same type of tough game out of them, but we're without Chris Johnson Jr. because he broke his ribs, and that's why it was so important of us to recruit someone like freshman James Head. So far, we've been able to completely dominate this game, and I'm just going to have to take off with Jakari Brown here, dive into the end zone, and sit back and enjoy the fact that our defense has only given up three points all day. I am so proud of how this team has come together, and it's a bit low scoring, but don't let that fool you. We have dominated this game, and Boston College never stood a chance. Once again, Jakari Brown has one player of the game, and this bye week for rest is much needed before we travel to Cal. To be honest, recruiting-wise, we have not gotten the best of players to commit, but I've been so focused on how we perform on the field, and I could not believe that the Golden Bears were 0-6 until I saw their schedule and the type of losses they've been taking. This is pretty much the same team that beat us in the playoffs, but their issue is Sam Jackson the fifth is injured, and even though it's a road game, we should be just fine. However, I really need to stop saying that because Jade Knott already has two touchdowns, and we just got very lucky that they dropped that ball because we're already down 14-0. to It is so hard to tell if this team is actually good or not. We're not creating any separation here, and we cannot afford to lose a game like this if we want to consider ourselves actual contenders. You can tell that we have a freshman blocking at running back because he just didn't pick up his man there, and to make matters worse, that caused Jakari Brown to get injured, so we're now without him for the rest of the game. We have a backup quarterback and a backup running back in, but I'm still hoping that we're able to get it within seven before the half. There's nothing open. Williams has plenty of time though, and there's something now. Unfortunately, he couldn't make this 10-yard layup on the run, and I feel like we have no choice but to go for it where I'm just going to scramble with him and hope he makes it into the end zone. They have a backup quarterback in as well, so we really can't make any excuses, but it seems like our chances are far gone at this point. We just need our quarterback to hit a target. I know Ray Ray Davis caught that ball, but it was intended for the slant route over the middle, and I just don't see how we're going to be able to come back with a quarterback that literally stinks. It has been a long, frustrating drive, but ever since that moment, we have not thrown a single pass, and we continue to run the ball. Allen is going to spin out of it, but the question is, can we finish it off inside the 10, and we can. We cannot lose to an 0-6 Cal team. That would kill our playoff seeding, but we also can't pass the ball, so it's going to be a while before. 
before we get to the other side of the field, and this option was not pitched in the right way. You've got to be joking. I so Feffa picks it up, and I didn't even say his name right. But we have gone down by 14 points, and this is what I get for not recruiting a backup quarterback. We're using like a 78 overall right now, and if we don't pick up this fourth and 23, it is all over. We might have the time to get this throw off, but it is going to result in an interception, and everything that could have went wrong in this game did. Jade Knott has destroyed us once again, and I would have never guessed that Cal was going to be our biggest conference rival in this video. I'm actually surprised that we only dropped to number 16, and poor Stanford's about to get a very frustrated opponent, and our goal is to just pound it down their throats until we eventually win. I'm just glad that Jacari Brown was only out for that one week and he's back in now, but we've already reached the end of the first quarter, and this is only our second possession of the game, so you can tell the style of play we're going for today. I just can't believe that we actually lost to Cal, and I don't know what type of defense Stanford's running right now, but it's not good. We'd end up beating them 28 to 7 and Jakari Brown had a great game on the ground but I'm not sure if we're ready to play at Florida State. This will probably decide who makes the ACC championship and they were runner-ups in the playoff last year so we have to give them our best effort. I like to see that we're already holding them to just a field goal and it is gonna miss so that is massive and what's more massive is Chris Johnson Jr. is back just in time as well since James Head is hurt for three weeks and don't tell me Florida State's gonna fall for the play action. We are gonna have Brashard Smith on the deep post and what a throw. This is the exact start that we needed and they're going with three slants that should have been intercepted but I can't complain because with a minute left in the second quarter we've doubled our lead and we're going to stop the Seminoles again. I even called a timeout just to give us an opportunity to score more points before the half. I think we are going to have this corner route but that is a tight throw and that was good defense from Florida State. Well with about four and a half minutes left we're still up by two possessions and can you imagine if we're able to get a goal line hold that would be massive and we're knocking them out of bounds so it's all going to come down to a game of inches and they got us with the play action action, but they drop it. It wasn't even a good defensive play. It just hit him right in the face mask. And getting out of this situation might be a little tough, but we do have this speed with Chris Johnson Jr. and he is going to get the first down. Getting that result is a big deal because once again, we're getting looked at like we're a top 10 team and Clemson is coming off back-to-back -back losses. So that'll make this game at Death Valley not as difficult. We've already scored one touchdown and by the looks of it, I think we're about to get our second. Ray Ray Joseph is going to find the open space. And it seems like that loss against Cal really woke this team up. They are floating up a ball that needs to be intercepted, but somehow two of our defenders got mossed right here. And because of that, Clemson scored a touchdown on that drive. Now it's 21 to 10 and Cade Klubnik is going to throw us an interception, which we are going to be able to take back to the house. What a play. That was the best ending to the first half we could have ever had, and we've had control since then. So if we're able to score another, I would pretty much write the Clemson Tigers off, but they have gotten us to a third and four. And let's see what defense they've come out in. They've left the drag wide open. That's seven and all around just a great performance by us. Jakari Brown was 13 for 17 and I'm surprised that no one on this team is a part of the Heisman race. Assuming we went out in conference play though we are going to make the ACC championship and I think that has to be our biggest focus. The last time we played Georgia Tech in Hard Rock Stadium you know what happened and they're six and three so I'm expecting them to put up a fight today but I would love to just thrash them and that is an interception from the junior already. Luckily they threw one right back to us and we should get onto the board first but I wish we didn't have that turnover. Since he got marked short, I trust our quarterback to get in, and Georgia Tech would respond back with a touchdown of their own, but we're about to do the same with Jacare Brown and his fast speed. There's something about the Yellow Jackets, though, that just won't go away. They are staying in this game, and that is going to be another interception from a man that wasn't even on our tight end at first. I didn't think he was going to get to that ball, but evidently he has eyes in the back of his head, and we're going to hold him on third and 12. But we should not be in a close battle right now. I don't want history to repeat itself, so I would just love if we could score a touchdown with a giant. Allen, and since he couldn't get in, we'll just give it to Chris Johnson instead. Georgia Tech has done a great job to stay in this game, but they're not going to get the fourth and three, and that's going to give us our ninth win of the year, which is enough to get us back inside the top four, but now we have to face off against Virginia Tech, and trust me, I won't be taking them lightly this time. All I can really say is they're a lot better than their record shows because they are in another competitive game with us, and I've actually been trying my hardest, but they've just got a good team out here. Ja'Curry Brown is quick though, and those defensive ends are not going to catch him. This feels like one of those matchups where we're going to pull away and win by a lot in the end, but Drones breaks the tackle, and I would have been so mad if he completed that pass. With about two and a half minutes remaining, we're still up 10, and we are going to get the fourth and two with Ja'Curry Brown. He is so good, and I'm just hoping that he returns for his senior season on second and goal. He's going to beat the quarterback spy. So like expected, we ended up winning by a few possessions, and I feel like he should be in the Heisman race. Florida State ended up winning their last conference game, so in order to make the ACC championship, we have to beat SMU, and it's a bit surprising.
surprising, but we've gone down by seven early, so we had to respond back. I think we're the better team, so over the course of the game, we should be able to take a lead, but they have stuck with our receivers really well, and I think it's just a lot closer than anybody else imagined it would be. We got a third down stop here, though, or not. These end-of-season conference road games are going to be the death of me. We need to get an interception here, though, and of course, the rain makes us drop the ball, but at least we're only going to be trailing by a field goal, and that's still true with four minutes left. We're going to go with a bit of the option here, but they played it perfectly. Ja'Kari Brown picks it back up, and he made sure that his own mistake didn't cost us, but we need to find the end zone here, which seems a bit more likely after that big completion, and they don't have a quarterback spy, so you know what we are going to do. It's third nine, and they go with the halfback draw. LJ Johnson Jr. trucks our best pass rusher, and we're going to tackle him, but not before he gets his team in a first and goal situation, and Preston Stone's going to have four chances to get his team into the end zone. We need to make a tackle here, and now I'd assume they won't go with the run, but they did anyways, so a ton is on the line here on fourth and goal. We just need to cover everything, and that should have been picked, but I really don't care because we were just able to prevent the catch, and I can promise it doesn't feel good to beat a 2-9 and nine SMU team by four, but at least we're going to get the win. That means we're going to make the ACC championship, and Jakari Brown has carried us there. It's going to be against 8-4 and four Pitt, and when I look at their schedule, there's not too much that I'm impressed with, especially since they lost to Notre Dame. We beat the Irish earlier in the year, and the transitive property doesn't always apply to football, but it's a good way to gauge your opponent, and it seems like we're about to go up 14-0 to zero early on. I'm just going to roll around with Jakari Brown. He gets stuck, but he still makes it in. If we're going to get a first round by, winning this game by a lot is so important, and that's going to be an interception with Porter Jr. So the senior has put us in a position where we should go up 21-0 to zero on the Panthers. Ray Ray Joseph's going to catch this one and juke his way in. Our offense has struggled recently, but against Pitt, it seems like we're starting to find our groove again, and we probably shouldn't have thrown this ball, but our tight end made a great one-handed catch. I cannot believe that this is the score, but now we're going to run the option, and I wouldn't go for it if we weren't already up by so much, but I'd rather just score a touchdown on this drive, and Ja'Kari Brown is going to do it. For his size, he moves really quickly, and I don't think he gets enough recognition in that regard. Here's another big run from him, and in the end, we're going to win the ACC championship, and I have to hope that's enough to get us a top four seed. Unfortunately, we had no one in the Heisman race, but we did have a player win an award, and this is the same guy that jumped 10 overalls during the offseason. That means we've knocked off our first of two season objectives, and through the air, I'm pretty impressed with how Ja'Kari Brown did, but what really stood out was his rushing ability as he had 16 touchdowns. Also, when he's actually healthy, Chris Johnson Jr. averaged 6.3 yards per carry, and all around, I'm just really happy with how our offense has performed. We also did just enough to finish as a top four seed, so we get a first round bye, which is massive, and our quarterfinal matchup will be against a Big Ten team. Well, surprisingly, with 26 seconds left, Drew Aller and the Nittany Lions are trailing the Spartans, but Caden Saunders just had a massive play, giving them a better chance. They're going to take the check down here, and he is marked a bit short, so that's going to run off a ton of time. And if I'm being completely honest, I would much rather face off against Michigan State than Penn State. This is the final play. It's the Hail Mary. It's knocked down, and we have our quarterfinal opponent. They're the 12 seed, so I think we lucked out. And by the looks of it, they lost to teams such as Nebraska and Western Michigan. If we handle business correctly, we'll be on to the semifinals. And it looks like this one's being played in the Rose Bowl. How far our playoff run goes is all dependent on how well we do defensively, and they're picking up this third and six. But we have another chance to get them off the field, and the counter is going to gash us for a lot more. They're going to take it to the crib. From what I've seen, it's going to be hard to stop Nathan Carter. But our offense is also really good, and we're going to go with the counter to Chris Johnson Jr., who is going to get the first plus more. Having him back and healthy is massive, and we are going to thread the needle here. But our quick response has been met by another solid drive from Michigan State, and I'd love to hold them on third and eight, where they're going with the pass, and that looks like a catch. But luckily for us, it wasn't ruled as one, and this is really close. I'm surprised that the Spartans aren't challenging it, and they could have really used those points because with a minute left in the first half, we're still up on the Spartans by one, and I was hoping we could pull off a touchdown there. They're pressing us again. This time, I hope the throw is on the money, and it is. Third and six now. I just want to get another stop. That would be perfect. We just got to sack him. Come on, why is he still up? We're also going to call a timeout to get the ball back, and that decision could be huge for us. James Head is going to take the kick return and get us to what looks like past midfield and a lot more, so we have to be getting near our kicker's range, and I don't think they're going to guard the halfback wheel route very well, but it was underthrown, and this is a 57-yard attempt, so it looks like it's going to be a bit short, and they're actually going to return it. Okay, this would not be the ideal ending to the half if they took it to the crib, but at least we're still up by eight points, and we've started the second half with an amazing drive to score again. As the game goes on, I'm going to get more aggressive, going for some sacks, and it feels like we have full control of it. On third and 15, I can sense the blitz, and we just need to get blockers. Ja'Kari Brown escaped the pocket. What a play from him to be able to get us out of there, and you can tell that Michigan State is starting to get desperate. We're just going to run down the clock with Chris Johnson Jr., and in the end, we're going to win by 16 points as Ja'Kari Brown has 
has carried this team to the semifinals. It was just a fantastic performance on his part, and I can't believe Notre Dame took down undefeated USC. This is the same team that we held to zero earlier in the year, and on top of that, their best two halfbacks got hurt, and on top of that, we get to play it at Hard Rock Stadium, so it's like a home game. However, it seems like they're already on pace to score more than they did the last time, and I just have to hope that that sack took them out of field goal range, but it did not, or it did. The kick literally doinked off of the upright, and I know they are not coming out here pressing our receivers. Ray Ray Joseph is so quick. You really thought that was going to work. We make the catch to him, and he jukes out the safety. Come on, buddy. Just get to the end zone. If you asked me what an ideal start would be, I think this is exactly it. And on third and one, they have everybody packed in, so we're just going to take it to the outside. Getting defensive stops is going to be massive, and we do it again. So you got to feel bad for Notre Dame fans. They have forced us to a long play, though, and it looks like we're about to take the sack, but we somehow break it. I don't know how we've gotten out of it. I'm going to find the open receiver at midfield. And with Ja'Curry Brown playing this well, I don't think there's much they can do. So far in the playoffs, we have gotten the exact matchups that we wanted. They have the deep post, but I got over to it with Mayfield Jr. And I'd give credit to the Irish's offense for doing better than the last time, but they just went with a halfback draw on third and 24. And I can't believe they haven't scored yet. We're simply playing like we just want it more. And I have plenty of time back here in the pocket. Still don't see anything open. So I'm going to have to run around with Ja'Curry Brown. He is going to complete the pass and throw off a few tackles from his receiver. That is exactly what I'm talking about about. There's no way the linebacker is going to make a play on the ball there. And we are getting closer and closer to returning to the national championship with Miami. And that's another touchdown. I'm starting to feel bad for Notre Dame because this has just turned into an embarrassment for them. Chris Johnson Jr. is moving around and I wish he would have just taken it in, but we're going to pass instead. We have the flat open and Ray Joseph fights. It's just hard to believe that they haven't been able to score on us for the second time this year. And we are going to get another defensive stop. So the floodgates have fully opened. Chris Johnson Jr. is going to take the handoff and go in again. For Notre Dame's sake, I'm honestly rooting for them to just score a touchdown. It looks like that's what's going to happen. But in the end, their fans have to be left so disappointed. And I'm not sure which SEC school I'd rather face in the natty. It's come down to the wire. Georgia is up by four, but Auburn looks like they're about to score. And on third and goal, they're going with the handoff, which gets blown up. And I don't know what's going to happen. This is the final snap of the game. It's going to be a bit short. So we're going to have to face the Georgia Bulldogs. And they're the reigning national champions, so that's not ideal. The good thing is no matter what, we are on pace to get Miami a championship. But we have a good chance of ending the rebuild this year, and it's just going to take beating a team that's only lost to Alabama. It could all come down to this, and I'm so excited to see how it goes. We got the ball first, and so far we've had a good drive. That was almost picked, though, so we're very fortunate it wasn't. On third and five, I'm going straight to Isaiah Horton. He's going to take this defender and throw him right off of him, and we might be able to get the Bulldogs off of the field early. It is third and 15. We get the sack, and this is a great start for the Hurricanes. I feel like all the momentum is swinging in our direction, but our blocker did not pick him up, and I saw that coming from a mile away. We just didn't have enough time in the pocket. This is ridiculous. Georgia's defense is insane and they're going with the halfback screen, which they don't even catch. And I might be a little delusional for thinking we can beat them over the top here, but they are pressing our receiver. And what is that throw? We're probably better off just pounding the rock down their throats. Chris Johnson Jr. gets nowhere though. And it seems like it's going to be a defensive battle. Here on third and 14, man-to-man -man coverage again, and we aren't going to convert. But I have faith that we can pick up this fourth and two just by rolling around with Jakari Brown and he scrambled for the first. Thank goodness. Keeping the drive alive on those four plays was so important because eventually we'd work it inside Georgia's red zone and we might be able to score again. There is no denying how well we are playing right now. On third and 13, they're not going to convert. And we could actually end the first half by going up by three possessions. They sent a blitz. I floated up to Ray Ray Joseph and he burnt the corner on him. They don't have a single first down up to this point and that was an immediate read we had to make. This time I'm just going to take our drag and I think we're doing so well. Sims makes one guy miss. He makes two guys miss and we have full control control of this game going up with more points. If Georgia can't score before the half, they're going to be in a ton of trouble and I don't think they're going to do so, which means I think we're going to get the ball back and have a chance for ourselves to do it. We are risking turning it over, but I think that risk is worth it if we can go up by even more points and look at Smith go. He just toasted that guy. With that pass, Ja'Curry Brown's also set a school record for passing yards and Georgia is done. We're going up 28 to zero. It's crazy that this is the same team that lost to a winless cow, but that result really woke us up and we are going to get an interception. Is it going to be 42 to zero? What is happening? Brock Vandegriff and the Bulldog offense is completely frazzled. And I think this is the most we have ever won a championship by in any of my rebuilds. Once we put in our backups, Georgia did finally score. But what's important is Miami was able to recover from that terrible loss to Georgia Tech. And there we are getting presented with the national championship trophy. We just did to Georgia what they did to TCU a few years ago. And our hardest matchup was actually against Michigan State. What's crazy is not even that many players were eligible for the NFL draft, so 
we would have been even better next year. And I have to see what happens with this team. For those of you that have stayed to the end, this is just a little extra treat. And at a 99 overall, we're projected to be the best team in the country. I'm just going to sim to the end of the season. And I have no idea how this team went 10 and 2 missing the ACC championship, but it seems like we weren't good enough to take down Florida State or Notre Dame. And Jacari Brown also didn't win the Heisman. It makes sense why we struggled though, because apparently he was hurt. And James had actually won the Doak Walker Award, but obviously none of our receivers crossed a thousand receiving yards. And I doubt we'll go very far in the playoffs. In our first game against Florida, we are going to win by 10. But in the next round, we have to face an undefeated West Virginia. So our season could come to an end right here in the Rose Bowl, but it doesn't. Jacari Brown being back from injury is huge, but Alabama could be the team to knock us out. It's a tough matchup and we are going to win again. This is exactly why I wanted to sim through one more season with this team. And are we going to win back-to-back -back national championships with Miami? Yes, we are. That is how you end a rebuild right there. And I can't believe how many players ended up getting drafted. We had like six first rounders. But if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely watch another one and I'll see you all in the next one.